It's now less than 100 days away, the Summer Olympic Games in Paris. And at the end of the Games and the closing ceremony, there will be the handoff to the next Summer Games to take place in Los Angeles. It may be four years away, but that's not much time, frankly, if you're Casey Wasserman, the entertainment and sports executive who was the point person in bringing the Games to L.A. We sat down with him to get a glimpse of the challenges facing a city and a region well on its way to hosting its third Olympics. Casey Wasserman, always nice to see you. Hey, listen, a um, couple of years out, <laughs> um, are you ahead of schedule, behind schedule? Well, I wish there was a schedule we could follow. Uh, I think it's one of the unique things about the Olympics is it's really an event like no other. Uh, and so it means there's no way to prepare for what happens on July 14th, 2028, except to do all the work we can to put ourselves in the best position to be ready. And so today, I think we're in a really good place financially. I think we're in a very good place operationally as we transition from planning to delivery. And uh, it's, it's the focus for the next four years. Let's talk about finances in a moment. But first, how, how much of a microscope do you put uh, the Paris Olympics under? I mean, uh, is, is it, uh, we want to know every step of the way that they're behind, behind or ahead, or is it sort of parenthetical to what you're doing here? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, it's our one chance to see an Olympics at full scale. Uh, we had thought we'd have two, one in Tokyo and one in Paris, and obviously that didn't happen in Tokyo. So it's our one chance for the entire staff uh, for all the partners, for all the venues, for all the people who are going to be I involved in the delivery to see what an Olympics at full, at full scale. Not that it's the same way in Paris as we will do it in L.A., but to be able to see it is, is pretty meaningful. Having said that, because it's such a different delivery model, where it is ostensibly a government agency to deliver the games, um, there's a lot of things that they will do that we won't do, we won't be expected to do, and we will do very differently. Uh, such as? Uh, well, the whole operations are essentially a government agency, so... Everything they do that doesn't work financially is, has a backstop from the government, whereas we are a private organization, so all of our decision-making here is driven by delivering a, 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 a profit to the city of L.A. Right, which happened in 1984. Peter Ubroth, it was a huge profit. And they, they, they made a boatload. <laughs> um, it, is that the, that's the goal. Uh, as I tell people, uh, Peter set the bar really high for us, and, and we, we aim for that. And so... We know we have the opportunity to do that, um, but opportunity is just uh, depends on how well we execute. Uh, how, so uh, let's talk about a little bit about that. Um, the, um, the taxpayers will be on the hook for what? The taxpayers in Los Angeles will be on the hook uh, only in an instance where we would lose money. So uh, except for that, they're on the hook for nothing. We actually are reimbursing the city for all city services above what is a standard uh, of delivery. So whatever a normal day in Los Angeles is in 26 or 27 or 28, Anything above and beyond that, we actually reimburse the city hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, we're paying for city uh, jobs today, uh, and obviously our youth sports investment of $160 million is significant. So only in an instance where we didn't break even would the, would the taxpayers of Los Angeles be on the hook for anything. Um, what's your confidence level that you're going to make a profit? Well, I'm incredibly confident that we will add a minimum break even. Uh, I think it's important to remember uh, we live in a, an incredibly complex and uncertain world. So our job is to make sure that we have produced enough revenue that we can deliver the games at a cost. And so we know today we have a lot of revenue booked. We haven't sold a ticket. Uh, we have a good idea what it's going to cost. But I can tell you we won't spend uh, really until the last 18 months about 85% of our budget. So we will, with great certainty, know how much revenue we have to spend, and that's what we will use to deliver the games. What has been the corporate attitude up until this point? Corporate attitude has been great. Uh, I think people understand the power of the Olympics coming back to the United States. This is not just Los Angeles' games. This is this country's games. Uh, really, and in the world, maybe has never needed it more. So the ability to unite this country, to bring the world together in what is a uniquely different American city uh, is incredibly powerful. And it's why we sit here with so much contracted revenue and so much momentum heading into Paris. Uh, right. It's unique in a number of ways, it would seem to me. There's a reason why this will be the third Olympics. Um, you could make a strong argument that no city is better suited for summer games. And you start with UCLA, you start with USC, nobody's got that. Uh, you got the desert, the mountains, the, you know, nobody's got that. Um, that said, uh, you still need to build some facilities. No, we, we have to build nothing permanent. Nothing. So Nothing permanent. Uh, we'll build a temporary beach volleyball stadium on the beach. Uh, we'll build a temporary track in the Coliseum because obviously uh, there's no track in the Coliseum. But uh, we are not building a single permanent facility for the entire delivery of the Olympic Games. And as you say, that stated, um, the real secret of our, of our success here is starting with USC and UCLA because those universities at that scale with infrastructure and athletic programs at that scale 
in the city center 10 miles from each other doesn't exist anywhere on earth. The world may look a lot different four years from now. Uh, there was Carter in 1980 pulled out of the Moscow games, the Russians pulled out of the 84 games. That's not in your, <laughs> in your vision. You have nothing to do with that. We want the world to be here, and that means welcoming athletes from countries that we don't even have normalized relations with. But we think it's an important opportunity, again, to bring the world together in a really powerful and special way. Every city ha leaves, the Olympics leaves a legacy. I, I understand that part of the legacy you want to leave is that you want to leave something for the athletes. <laughs> uh, what was the germination of that? How does that work? So, for most Olympians, um, their Olympic journey, their Olympic story is maybe even a single heat, <laughs> a single 10 seconds, a single minute of a race. It's not that they go back and play in the NBA and make lots of money in their professional sports. It is, it is truly their life's passion for a very small moment of time. And, and we think we can, through our partnership with Guild, uh, create a lot of opportunities for athletes to enhance their education pre, during, and post their Olympic careers. And that's the platform that LA28 can provide to, uh, to the athletes. There'll be a thousand athletes on Team USA here. But really to all the athletes in this country training, it's really about how can we make their experience from being in the games much more than just about that moment in time. And so that, that means sharing the wealth? Yeah, sharing the wealth. Uh, I mean, look, we don't distribute money. That's obviously the job of the Olympic committees and the, and the governing bodies. Um, but we want to provide as much opportunity through partnerships and resources and jobs and education. Um, we even got an a in-state tuition bill passed for anybody who trains the Olympics in California. All those things are just opportunities for those athletes to enhance their, their livelihoods based on their Olympic passion. Uh, final question. Uh, I, I know that y you had a special relationship with your uh, grandfather. Um, I, I pass by the Lou Wasserman <laughs> building whenever I go to coffee at Universal. When I have an intern with me, I say, listen, you need to know who uh, Jack Webb was. You need <laughs> to know who uh, Jimmy Stewart was, Cary Grant. Uh, you need to know who Lou Wasserman was. He changed the industry, he's legendary. Um, it's a long way from being successful for you, but what would your grandfather think uh, this far deep into this quite remarkable endeavor? Um, I think he'd be proud of me taking on the challenge. Um, he grew up in this country in a, during the depression, had no money, made a life for himself uh, in this city and in this community, and his view was that giving back uh, is something we all need to do, and I think I give back in lots of ways, but done right, this could be an incredibly meaningful way to give back to the community I was born in and raised in, and I think that would make him proud. Casey Wasserman, the president of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee, the man behind LA 2028. Our final comments after this.